Let's get to the first topic of discuss for today. The Central Bank of Nigeria officially announced the launch of the RT200 FX program in a bid to get $200 billion in FX repatriation in the next three to five years. The RT200 Forex program is anchored on the backdrop of value adding export facilities, non oil commodities expansion facilities, non oil forex rebate schemes, dedicated non oil export terminals, and by annual non-all export summit. This policy is expected to strengthen and deepen the supply side of the foreign exchange market, which is more critical and impactful than demand management interventions in the foreign exchange market. While the CBN has been fixated on managing the demand side of the foreign exchange market, whose outcomes have reportedly been sub-optimal, what are the prospects of this policy? Now joining me live from our Abuja studios to look at this is a professor of accounting at now University of Nigeria, Professor Fili Ogadioha. Good afternoon, Prof. It's good to see you. Yeah, tell you good afternoon and thank you for having me. I will first of all ask you of, uh, of your direct reaction to this new policy by the Central Bank of Nigeria, the RT and the $200 billion FX repatriation from non all proceeds. Is this not a tall order? Yeah, thank you once again. It's a very good development for Nigeria. It's a good development for our economy and uh, is a good development for everybody. CBN has been intervening in various ways. If you recall the Anchor Brewers program is their intervention. The SME uh, program for encouraging the small and medium industry is their intervention. Then also the Naira for Dollar is also their intervention scheme. And this one, which is uh, RT200, is also their intervention. They have been coming with so many interventions to be able to contribute to the growth of the economy through uh, manufacturing and uh, through enhancement of economic activities. Well, I see a monetary policy as a complement of physical policy in any country. And that's what CBN is doing. But we have problem with the physical aspect of the policy in the sense that the monetary policy that supports the physical policy seems to be working alone. Because if the physical policy is working in line with monetary policy, we would have realized our economic goal far back. If you look at the security situation in the country, it's as a result of failure of uh, physical policy to carry out the, to carry out, uh, the administrative process and the implementation policies that will enable Nigeria to tackle the, uh, the security issue. And of course, every investor likes to invest in an investment-friendly climate. No investor will go to a place where he knows that his life may not be safe, and again, his investment will not be safe. That is what Nigeria is seeing today. Then, the physical policy is also treated towards how do we work for 24 hours in an economy, because every viable economy works for 24 hours a day. That's three shift. Nigeria works for only eight hours. But why? The reason is not far-fetched. One of the reasons is the security issue that I explained. Another reason is also that there is no power. There is no electricity to drive the economy, to drive productivity. 
and the electricity we have is not even sufficient for home consumption, let alone driving the uh, manufacturing. Every viable manufacturing plant works for 24 hours, non-stop. If you go to a manufacturing company, you will see that it has three shifts. Morning shift, afternoon shift, and night shift. And people continue working like that. And it's actually all these shifts that give you the economic activities. It is all these shifts that employ people. It is all these shifts that give you the productivity that you will use. Then you look at, again, another supportive uh, physical policy is transportation. If you produce good in Abuja today, how do you take it to Medugri? How do you take it to Potakot and Denugu and Lagos? A country should have walkable trains that have batches that take goods to different parts of the country. The good can be produced in Kano and sent down to Potakot with minimal cost. The cost is almost the same because the transport system is low. But the type of transportation we have is actually a blockage of the economic activities trucks everywhere on the road. You cannot move in certain areas because truck has barricaded the whole road. So aside from that, you look at what else can you do to now so that what the CBN is intervening in will have uh, some meaning. Then, we always boast that uh, we are the largest producing, we are the largest economy mm -hmm. in Africa. Mm -hmm. But we fail to understand that we are the largest economy in Africa, but we are one of the lowest in per capita income. Nigeria tried to avoid the computation of ca per capita income. Rather, they will tell you uh, G GDP per capita. What do we do with GDP per capita? It's per capita income that determines how much economic activities generate from those who are working. Hmm, prof. Now, and this affects also okay. security of life and property. Because if per capita income is low, it all means all is not well. Nigeria is not even uh, one of the, is, is not even ranked among the tenth of per capita income in Africa, not to talk of the world. But they always remove it. They don't talk about this. So how can you get per capita income when there's nothing to produce? Hmm. Uh, prof, let me, allow, me, uh, allow me to interject. Nigeria is politics. Yeah, yes, allow me to interject now, Prof. Politics great, and then great. MCC. Prof, can you hear me? Hello? Yes, Prof, I can hear you. Now, allow me to interject, Prof. I, I wanted to ask you that the focus is non-oil sector, which is where government is shifting focus to. And there are some anchors. This is anchored on, like, some broad uh, uh, initiatives or facilities to support this movement. One is value-adding to our exporting products. Another thing is the commodities expansion facility and also FX rebate schemes. Now, with all of this, do you see our export market growing exponentially that we'll be able to look away from oil totally like we expect? Okay. I'm not hearing again. Okay, can you hear me now, Prof? Yeah, I can hear now. Okay, I said, with all of these policies, do you think that it is time for Nigeria's export uh, industry, export segment, do you think it is time for that uh, massive explosion that we expect to happen in that sector? With this move by the CBN, do you think that will happen? Well, first of all, Let's take it empirically. Hmm.
let's take it. Can you hear me? Go ahead. Yes. Yeah. Let's take it empirically. If we take it empirically, you see that as of today, all those products that CBN is trying to promote, as of today, we are, expect, uh, we are exporting less than $1 billion per annum. We are exporting 804,000 million. 804,000 million, less than 1 billion per annum. And CBN projection is that we shall be able, with the support they are making, that we shall be able to export around uh, 200 uh, billion, 200 billion dollars between three to five years. That gives you that if it, uh, the projection is for uh, a period of three years, we shall be expecting to export 66 uh, goods worth 66 billion dollars every year. And if we take it even far to five years, means that we shall be able to be exporting around 50 billion dollars every year. Well, it doesn't take a rocket science to know that we cannot achieve it. When today you don't, you cannot export one billion. Then you are thinking in the next three years you will be able to export uh, 66 billion. Then, if you have to expect that, what are the parameters on ground that will enable you to do that? Has the power improved that will enable manufacturers to, manfa to manufacture without using generator? Because the use of genset doubles the production cost. Okay, aside from power, has security of life and uh, investment improved? Those products we are talking about are farm products that have to be processed. And for us to get the farm product increased, you first of all have to tackle the security of lives and property. You have to first of all tackle the issue of herdsmen. Stop them from unleashing on the farmers. Stop them from raping. Stop them from killing. So that farmers can go into the farm and produce. Of course, we are talking of export. You cannot just bring out any of these things raw like that and you think people will buy it from you abroad. For you to export them, <coughs> you have to have processing firms, companies that will process this. How many investment, how many companies are coming in here? People cannot come in when they are not sure that the, the security of lives and their property is there. People cannot come in where the legal system is not very firm, where you come out with policy every time. Investors look at the policies you bring out every year. That today you ban this, tomorrow you ban the other one, Another day you stop this from going. Another day you stop FS from moving out. Another day you allow it to uh, come in. So how can a genuine investor come and put his uh, 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 production here? And all those processing needs everything you will use to do processing or manufacturing. We come from outside, including the expertise that we man such. So is there enabling environment for them to do this? No. Then you come to transportation. If you produce goods here, how to make the good produced here to be almost the same with what is uh, being sold in Kano, the same product, is transport system. It's security of life and property. So how can uh, mm. this thing be realized? Indeed. If CBN is talking about, with all the effort they are making, I really praise them. But there are no physical policy to drive those their monetary support. So since they are not there, how can we realize it? 
look at our brother here, Ghana. Ghana is producing, uh, Ghana is exporting the same item that we are trying to, to get up to 1 billion. Ghana is exporting nearly 2 billion every year with the little population of Ghana as 30 million people. They are exporting 1.9 billion dollar worth of goods every year. Cote d'Ivoire, which is <coughs> comparatively uh, having the productivity of uh, cashew, cocoa, and other things like Nigeria, they are exporting 3.6 billion dollar every year. Our own is not up to 1 billion. So let our forecast be realistic. In as much as we praise the governor of CBN and his group for what they are doing, they should be able to have researchers that will help them do forecast, do correct prediction. All over the world, people rely on the data from CBN and the data from the Bureau of Statistics in any part of the world. If our own data becomes like this, unrealistic, so how do we plan? So that goal is almost impossible. We cannot even attain one quarter of it. We should start, first of all, to think of what do we do to export at least $2 billion every year, since we are exporting today less than $1 billion. That is more realistic than saying that you should you project to export $66 billion every year for mm. three years. Prof, Prof. Uh, nice submission. <laughs> Prof, on the final note, time is fast spent already. If we can do this in one, two minutes, uh, very lovely. Now, if the central bank stops to give banks FX by the end of the year, like they've said that banks should source for FX themselves, what do you think will happen in one minute? Uh, to look, please, can you come again? Because okay. the volume is too tiny here for okay. me to hear you. Okay, Prof, if, can you hear me now? Yeah, it's better. If the central bank stops to uh, uh, the deployment of forex to banks, what do you think would happen if they have to source for forex themselves? Well, let me tell you our problem. Our problem is not the channel where the FX is being sold. If it is being sold by bank, still fine. If Bureau de Change is allowed to sell, still fine. Our problem is implementation of the policy and policy somersault and change of policies every time. You can see why dollar rate went to 500. It was 400 and uh, something before. When they stopped Bureau de Change, the things escalated to 500. Then trying to put it back becomes impossible. Central bank should come out with a stable policy, which is a part of what I say that it drives out investment. If you come out today with this policy, and that policy will not last for one year, and the, an investor wants to plan for five years of how his investment will go, and your own policy changes every uh, six months or every year, no investor would like to come. Mm. They will not. I'm telling you because I am involved in economic analysis. I was actually involved in corporate governance. I was involved in managing a multinational that produces a lot of good services in part of the world. I know how to analyze economy before we go into any country. So all these policies of government affect everything. And again, mm. if you look at either through channel one or channel two of who we said the FX, why I say it doesn't matter is because if there are economic activities that produces goods and services and we export our goods and services, then the dollar rate will drastically come down. 
It's a good way to it live in prof. That's what come. time can take. I must apologize, but we have to just let go now, prof. Interesting conversation with you. Very educating, I must confess. I've been speaking to Professor Philly Ogodoha, uh, who is a professor of accounting at now University of Nigeria. Thank you so much for spending your afternoon with us on Business Nigeria. We appreciate this. Tolu, thank you very much. Thank you for having me.